Coming up on Loyola News Chicago, we'll discuss the firing of Loyola women's basketball head coach Kate Ochter. Plus, we'll give you some fun facts about March Madness sweethearts, St. Peter's. From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Mary Planky. And I'm Amelia Keys. We have a lot of news to cover, so let's get right into it. We're following the story of Loyola women's basketball coach Kate Ochter. It was announced today that Ochter's contract with the team has not been renewed. Ochter took the helm of the Ramblers women's team in 2016. During her six years as head coach, the team holds a record 67 wins and 110 losses overall, with 36 wins and 72 losses in the Missouri Valley Conference. This season was her best at Loyola, with the team going 18-12 and 12 to finish fifth in the MVC. This was the first season the women's team notched 18 wins since 1989. Despite that success, Ochter's contract was not extended. The news comes just days after three of Loyola's players entered the transfer portal. Loyola Athletics announced today that a national search for the Ramblers' next women's coach has already begun. When Ochter came to Loyola, she replaced another coach who had also been fired. Cheryl Swoops was a Basketball Hall of Fame player who was fired in 2016 after three seasons at Loyola. The school launched an investigation of Swoops after almost all of her players transferred from the team. Several said she was difficult to play for and threatened players with their loss of their scholarships. Now Ochter becomes the second women's basketball coach in a row to not have their contract renewed. We are following the death of Elise Mallory, a Chicago activist for LGBTQ rights. She was found dead near Loyola's Lakeshore campus over the weekend. A woman's body was found just a mile from campus in the 500 block of Sheridan Square. The body belonged to 31-year-old Elise Mallory, who is a therapist and activist. The news of Mallory's death strikes further fear into some students, particularly those in the LGBTQ community. I think it's it's a real it's really sad that Loyola did not pick up on this and kind of um, spearhead a movement in a way to not only condone but also make space for those people who might have been affected by this. Um, that's really sad to me, but I'm hoping that they begin to think about the way that they kind of operate when it comes to the safety of the campus, but also the safety of the, the safety of the students. Police are still investigating the case, but so far they say they do not suspect foul play. Anyone with information should contact Chicago Police. The Loyola Phoenix recently published a sexual assault survivor story about reporting her case to the Office of Equity and Compliance. Gender-based violence is a problem across college campus. Phoenix Editor-in-Chief Katie Anthony shares why these cases are not easy to cover. Covering sexual assault is one of the most difficult topics, but I still want to encourage students if they feel comfortable to share their story um, and whether that's with us, whether that's reporting it to the university. Um, I think it's important that we tell people about what goes wrong in these processes, but it's also really essential to try and hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. Journalists start their investigation by talking with those involved over the years. Student journalists have written countless stories involving gender-based violence on or near Loyola's campuses. The journalists cover all sides of the story from the survivors to the institutions. Anthony says the Phoenix will continue to write about these kinds of stories in the future. According to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, around 26% of female college students and 7% of male college students experience gender-based violence. Loyalist students are stepping up to aid in the crisis in Ukraine with the Ukraine Solidarity Network. The group was founded by four Loyalist students in response to a lack of action from the school's administration. Loyalist Campus Ministry Program put out one of the only responses to the crisis overseas to students via email. But this wasn't enough, according to a story from the Loyal Phoenix that spoke to the founders of the Solidarity Network. This is an issue that hits close to home for Loyalist students. Apart from having a Ukrainian population in the student body, Loyola's Water Tower campus is located just around the corner from the Ukrainian consulate. The Solidarity Network is volunteering to gather necessary medical supplies to send to Ukraine. We have an update on last week's story about Loyola's upcoming graduation with more details on how to order tickets for your family and friends. The deadline to order tickets is Friday, April 15th. They are available through Loyola's ticketing website, Rambler Tickets. All guests must display their tickets to enter Gentile Arena. No exceptions. Graduating students do not need a ticket to order a ticket for themselves. 
On graduation day, students will pick up their name cards in the Damon Den to get access to the ceremony. As we reported last week, arts and sciences graduates will be limited to four tickets each. All other graduates can get up to six. If that's not enough for you, additional tickets may be released at the end of April. March Madness continues. See how Chicago plays a part in this tournament? Coming up. And a local student is earning college credit learning about an atypical subject. Stick around to see what he's learning how to do. Sweet Nouveau is an artisan confections company. We specialize in our artisan caramels that are each made by hand. We have a variety of different flavors. We make our caramel pretzels. We have new items coming out all the time, new flavors coming out all throughout the year. Each of our products are hand cut, individually wrapped, and hand packaged by us. And we also do our own packaging for gifts and other items like that for the holiday season. Feel free to visit our website at www.mysweetnouveau.com. The four-day summer music festival Lollapalooza is a popular draw for music fans in Chicago, and buzz has grown since the lineup was announced on Tuesday. Casey Frank talks to Loyola students for their reaction to the acts coming to this year's event. The Lollapalooza lineup came out on Tuesday, and there have been mixed opinions from Loyola students. I thought it was kind of lame. They didn't really get anyone. Um, there's only one or two people that I really even listen to or recognize. Um, and all the headliners are just kind of whatever, so who knows, maybe it'll be okay, but I was expecting better, I suppose. I think it's pretty mid, like there are definitely some big names on there, but there definitely are a lot of names I haven't heard of, which is a good and bad thing because, you know, you get a lot of exposure to new bands that you haven't heard of, but also, like, you don't really know how good or bad they are going to be and what this lineup's and who's all available, so... It's kind of mid, I'd say, but at least I'm looking forward to the big bands that are playing. I think it's actually a pretty good lineup. Um, I think it's pretty diverse in, like, the genre of artists. Like, you've got your bigger artists, like, Dua Lipa and Doja Cat, um, but then you still got some of your, like, more indie artists, like Glass Animals. Um, I really want to go to see Coin. That's one of my favorite bands. I'm very excited they're going to be there. And while some are disappointed by the lineup, there are still a few acts exciting Loyola students. Lollapalooza will take place at the end of July in Grant Park. Casey Frank, Loyola News Chicago. Ticket packages start at $350 and are available at Lollapalooza.com. With COVID restrictions lifting and Lollapalooza coming up, it's important to practice good safety measures when in a large crowd. If you're going to a concert soon, some measures you can take to, is to stay in a group or with a buddy, watch your drinks, know where the closest exits are, and stay on the outside of large crowds. Concert goers should avoid mosh pits and be aware of crowd surges. The Madness is coming to Chicago. The United Center is hosting the Midwest Regional of March Madness. This includes the next two rounds of the NCAA tournament. The Sweet 16 starts tomorrow night with the University of Kansas and Providence College battling for a spot in the Elite Eight. That game will be followed by Iowa State University tipping off against the University of Miami. The winners of these two games will go on to play in the Elite Eight round on Sunday, March 27th. If you're following this year's March Madness Tournament, you've probably heard of St. Peter's. They're the 15 seed who busted brackets in the East region to head to the Sweet 16. St. Peter's is just the third 15th seeded team in tournament history to make it to the Sweet 16. The darlings of the NCAA Tournament hail from Jersey City, New Jersey, and just like another Cinderella team we know, it's a Jesuit university. However, the school is much smaller than Loyola with an undergraduate population of just over 2,000 students. The team also is the only university in the country to have the Peacock as a mascot. St. Peter's has already defeated the two-seed Kentucky Wildcats and seven-seed Murray State Racers. The Peacocks will play their first game tomorrow against the three-seed Purdue Boilermakers at 6 p.m. In other sports news, the Loyola men's volleyball team is off to a successful start in conference play. The Ramblers compete in the Midwestern Intercollegiate Volleyball Association and have taken down all but one of their eight conference opponents so far. Loyola is 13-6 and six on the season so far and is ranked 7th in the American Volleyball Coaches Association Top 15 poll. The Ramblers look to continue their hot streak tonight on the road against McKendree at 7 p.m. 
A local student has turned a hobby into college credit, and he might even turn it into a career. Robert Malcomaki talks to Jim Archie, whose passion has led him to an unconventional course load through St. Louis University. For a lot of people, home brewing is nothing more than a hobby or side project. Jim Archie picked it up a couple years ago. As I've gained experience, I've gotten a lot better at the craft. I've gotten to a point where I can break it out and people try it and they go, wow, you made this? And that's, that's a really good feeling. But now, it's become more than just a hobby. Jim is taking university courses to become a professional. So Jim, what's it like knowing that your college experience and your college curriculum, what you're studying is so different from what everyone else is doing? What goes through your head when you're in class and you're thinking, hmm, I'm just sitting here learning about beer. What's that like? It's kind of surreal because the, the subject matter is absolutely fascinating. One of my classes this past semester, one day the professor was just like, you know, today your homework is just to have a beer. Like, just enjoy it and think about how it tastes. Um, and then this upcoming semester, my professor just sent out an email today actually saying like, hey, let's set up a weekly Zoom happy hour where we all get on a Zoom call and have a couple beers and just chat. Jim has brewed and bottled several batches of mead and beer and has learned a lot in the process. Some learning experiences were more impactful than others. I had a couple gallon things of mead, like just underneath the sink. And I went, oh, I don't have my, uh, I don't have my airlock that I normally use for brewing. I only have the one and I've got two jugs here. So I'm just going to screw the cap onto one of them because it doesn't need air anyway. Like nothing needs to get out. So I screwed the cap on. I went to class. I came back. I sat down. I was just doing my homework in the kitchen and bang big explosion underneath the sink, glass and mead everywhere. The kitchen was sticky for like a week. Moving forward, Jim wants to take this even more seriously. He incorporated a business last year and is now looking into opening his own brewery. That is in the cards. I'm hoping to open a beatery, make some beer on the side as well in the near future. Jim encourages anyone who's interested in home brewing to give it a try like he did. He says it's easy, accessible and fun. Robert Malcomaggi, Loyola News, Chicago. I don't know about you, but that seems like a really fun way to get some class credit. Oh, definitely. I wonder if we have a class like that at Loyola, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. That's all the news we have for today. Thanks for joining us. See you next time on Loyola News Chicago.